Okay, <laughs> question for you. <laughs> Who would win in a street fight? Okay. Aaron O'Toole or Peace McKay? Ed. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, incels of all <laughs> ages. Thank you for coming back to This Week in Canada. I think this is episode four, and uh, my name, of course, is Roberto, of course, Roberto Wakerel Cruz, and uh, this is my trusty co-host, Nico Johnson. Nico, say hello. Hello, everyone. Wonderful to be back, as per usual. And Nico, we got a hell of a week uh, in oh. Canada. <laughs> oh. we? It was a wonderful week. It was, it was probably one of my favourite weeks since I began covering Canadian politics. Not only did we have a wonderful Green Party debate, which was as stupid as you would presume it to be, but there was a wonderful news story about Patty Hajdu, and on top of that, Jerry Butts shot himself in the foot. So <laughs> all that combined, it, it's been wonderful, totally wonderful. Yeah, so... Uh... You know, I don't know if we could have picked a better time to uh, make a podcast about dumb stuff going on in Canada because it turns out this is just like the gold mine. We're in a gold rush of really stupid news. Yeah. I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> well, I do. Can, I, I'm really excited about this one. Let's talk about the Green Party debate. Now, as a reporter, you're often asked to cover things you don't particularly want to. For instance, right. I covered a riot in Montreal, got tear gassed. Um, I saw a bloke get a rubber bullet to his chest and it scared, you know, the living hell out of me. But I did it because I have a duty to the Canadian public. Sure. Um, the same also applies to covering the Green Party debate. I really don't want to watch it. It's just filled with people who shouldn't be anywhere near national television talking on national television. And, uh, and it was so boring. But there were a few <laughs> moments which I would like to highlight. The first one was some white guy came on and said, hey guys, I have an idea. Not only should we defund the police, but we should get the police to pay $20 out of their own pocket and give it to a black guy that they, uh, that they detain or something. So whenever they detain someone or pull someone over for questions, you have to give it to a black person, like money to a black person. Oh God, God knows why. Um, but then the only black person in the debate was like, hold on. That's really racist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I didn't watch the debates. I didn't have to cover that event. Thank God. I don't know if anybody would really want to watch that. Mm. I imagine uh, it would have been funny, at least at some points. I saw there was a uh, very certain handsome gentleman uh, mm. wearing a top hat. Was, oh, that the same, oh. was that the same guy? that He wasn't the even on there for the entire time, right? So there, there, there's so many candidates. God knows how the Green Party has that many members, let alone leadership candidates. There's like 12 of them. So they had to do it over a Zoom call and you can only have like six people on or something. I don't know why, but they only had six people at a time. So uh, halfway through, they sort of switched the candidates and in comes this man with a top hat and like a green shirt. And it was very fitting as well because he had tons of potted plants behind him. And I, 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 didn't, I wasn't really paying attention at that point, but it, I was just overwhelmed by the idea that this guy managed to run for the Green Parties. And again, the Green Parties, as I was saying a few weeks ago, has one competent MP. They have one MP called Jenica Atwin, again, the MP for Fredericton, who mm. could genuinely do a lot of good things for the party. You know, she scores a lot of points. She's like an indigenous uh, woman. She's also intelligent. She's been to university and, you know, perfect candidate who can right. take over from Elizabeth May. She's not running because these white guys with top hats, apparently, <laughs> want to keep talking about having, you know, want to either abolish the police, defund the police or give black people $20 when they get spoken to by the police. It's, it's so irritating. Well, like you were saying, with the you don't know how the Green Party finds its members. I imagine it's kind of like when you know when you uh, are at like a Walmart, or I guess in your case like a Tesco's or whatever. I don't know what they have over there in England, but yeah. uh, do do they have that thing where like every time you cash out, they're like, "Would you like to sign up for the Walmart credit card?" Oh, all and, the time. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. you're just like. Uh, I guess I my guess. life is already ruined and I, I have no credit <laughs> and I'll pay like 40% usury interest. Yeah, sure. I guess I'll sign up. I imagine yeah. that's sort of what it's like to sign up for the Green Party where you just probably go on the site. Maybe after this, uh, this podcast, I'll probably just, I'll sign up. God, yeah. I'll probably be, be, become I a, think... a candidate in no time. 
Yeah, no, it'd be easy. Because apparently there's no limits, so they just allow anyone they want on to, like, discuss the podcast. Oh, sorry, not the podcast, the leadership. Ah, you know, me, always confused about the podcast. And, uh, but, but I, I don't know where they, they find these people, you know? They, they shouldn't be, they're not even politicians. They're not no. even, like, candidates. They're just people who like green stuff. Yeah. And they're allowed to go on a national debate hosted by, you know, Steve, is it Palkin or Pikin? Steve Pikin? Steve Palkin? You know who I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and he had to sit through this dross for two hours. He had to talk to just normal people about half assed policy ideas that they came up with probably on the spot. Well, this is, yeah, so where do they find these people? I imagine you have to be inherently kind of weird to be into the Green Party. And, uh, yeah. you know, I, I feel bad saying that my next door neighbor, who's quite nice, but uh, I, I was talking, I said this exact kind of point out loud, and she was like, I vote for the Green Party. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> but uh, they're, they're inherently kind of weird because there's already a better party that they could just go and subscribe to. It seems like the NDP is basically... That environmentalists. The yeah, they're environmentalists. They have stronger yeah. policies. They're a better party, more sound. It's kind of like, uh, no offense to uh, who, whoever is a Maxime Bernier supporter. <laughs> but it's kind of like they're the left version of like uh, the People's Party of Canada. Where well, even it's like... like Go ahead. Yeah, e even like the Liberal Party. I know in the last yeah. election, everyone like telling Trudeau, you bought a pipeline. And yeah, he did, I guess... But he also found a way, after buying a pipeline, to totally shut it down. So he's as environmentalist or environmentally conscious as the Green Party are. I mean, they're just a totally irrelevant party. Without, you know, they have uh, the walrus, Elizabeth May, who sort of just is the leader for life. But without her, they're nothing. It, it's, it's her party. It's like how the communist China is, is sort of, you know, Mao's party. It's, it, you know, Elizabeth May is Canada's Mao. Yeah, and they're not getting, they're not going anywhere. I mean, oh, no. I, 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 they won one seat, I think you said last election. Uh, uh, three seats Atwin, in the last election. Three seats in the last yeah. election. Uh, one new seat they won, right? Two. Two new seats. Oh, Come wow. on, look, dude. look Come at on, them! Dude. Look at yeah. them go! They're really on a hot streak. Well, uh, but I just don't see it going anywhere from there. I mean, there's a few weird kind of like I'm sure in BC and uh, Fredericton, some places around that might yeah. potentially maybe have a need for a Green Party. Uh, that has enough people that are like crazy enough to do that, that drink enough kombucha and do yoga or whatever, <laughs> <laughs> that, would, that would give their, give the green vote. But generally, it's a dying party. They're not. They won't see the. You know, I don't know what what their long term plan is. If they'll be around for like the next 20, 30 years. Yeah, it's yeah. really just based on There's the no name. Point. There's no point to them. They just sort of exist. They're like, you know what they're like? They're like a Portuguese jellyfish. You know those ones that sort of float around the sea? They, they don't have any brain. They just exist. They're alive, but they're not really. <laughs> and eventually, they end up on a beach and they sting a small child. And that's what a Green Party effectively do. They, they, they float around and when they're in Alberta, they sting the local populace die and then everyone forgets about them they're totally useless they're, they just they subsist and that's it you know yeah i agree i actually didn't watch it. i wish i did but that's why i'm going to move on from this because i don't really know uh, what yeah. really happened but I, you know there what? is a, a topic i was so excited to discuss this and then i just realized that i just don't care and that's <laughs> what i realized the green party is yeah it's just it's totally like irrelevant a, yeah it's like a huh that's interesting. And then you yeah. get on with your day. It's like one of the videos that The Sun puts up on Twitter. You know, like the British Sun newspaper? Yeah. They've got 2 million subscribers or followers on Twitter. And the way they got that is just by putting up 10 second videos of like a koala getting its belly rubbed or a girl <laughs> like seeing rain for the first time. And it's 10 second videos. It's like, oh, that's interesting. And then you scroll on. <laughs> And yeah. that's totally, that's, that's how about I think as, of the Green Party. Yeah, that's about as much as I think about the Green Party every day. I think yeah. about what I'm going to eat for dinner more than I think about the Green Party. And yeah. the Green Party, like, it's part of my life. Like, I, I, I cover politics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're so irrelevant. It's kind of like, oh, did I water my plants today? That's and it's still I'm thinking about plants. I don't even think about the Green Party. They just write off because they're the Green Party because they're a color party. You know, then that's you know that's yeah. all all they have to them. But I, this is what I want to talk about. Can I talk about what I want to talk about? Sorry. Can I talk about what uh, what I wanted to talk about? You know, what we, I think it's a big topic. Go, go ahead. I want to hear it. So this guy, I think uh, our viewers are, might know who he is. His name is uh, Gerald Butts. <laughs> uh, Ger Jerry Butts. Uh, Good old Gerald, Jerry. Jerry Butts. And uh, he was, uh, he's been Justin Trudeau's best friend for a long time. They probably, you know, had some 
college menage a trois together or whatever. Had a, that means going out for dinner with a third person, right? Uh, yeah. And, and so they had a, they probably had a bunch, they, they've known each other for a long time, right? They, and he's his right hand man. He's, uh, helped him win in 2015, helped him win in 2019. He's a pretty bright guy. You can probably tell he seems to be the mastermind of any policy that Trudeau ever actually puts into place. I'm going to interrupt um, you. Yeah, go ahead. Everyone says this about mm-hmm. people who have lots of power, but no scrutiny. So Gerald Butts, for instance, in Britain, there's a guy called Dominic Cummings. Before that, Alistair Campbell. I guess people think about it like with Jared Kushner in the States. And they just assume they're all powerful because they're, I guess they are in a position of power, as I said, and that they don't have parliamentary scrutiny. Gerald Butts is not a clever man. He's really, really not. And I know you automatically think people like that are clever because they're in positions of authority. But he's not. And I think there's pretty good evidence of that uh, yesterday. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so this guy, uh, Gerald Butts, decided to pull up a photo, and I'm going to find it right now. I'm going to introduce it, but I, I want to make sure that yeah, we can James, cover this. Can you, uh... That we can cover this really thoroughly because it's one of the dumbest memes I've ever seen. It was a map of the United States. Uh, and it's supposed to be a tour guide uh, for Canadians traveling the United States. He's since yeah. deleted the tweet because I think he realized it was a really <laughs> stupid idea. Uh, but he, with with each state labeled a different thing. And yeah. uh, I, I, really quickly, if I may, I'm sure James will pull it up as well. But I'd like to read some of the this is yeah some of the stupid stuff that is on this map, which is uh, kind of yeah. So Texas, this one's really confused me. White <laughs> the, the white Congo. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. It's not funny. (laughs) Also, I don't see how Texas and the Congo, even if, like, imagine if Texas was all black people. Yeah. That would you just, that doesn't make it, like, it's still totally dissimilar from the Congo in every way. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's it's really, really strange. uh, But there's worse ones than that, of course. Oh, yeah. There's really bad ones. Uh, Basically, okay. So Florida to Oklahoma all the way up to it looks like Virginia is all just called basically Christian Iraq. <laughs> again. Um again Why? I don't see any similarity <laughs> I don't see any similarities to Iraq in those Do you know states. how <laughs> different Virginia is to Iraq? <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. like what's funny about that aside from you're just calling them Iraqis? <laughs> yeah, there's and then Florida is old people which I mean yeah, yeah I the guess. joke it's been done before you know like florida yeah. has old people in it yeah everyone knows that uh th- there's uh, some other really weird ones potatoes cold hell and uh and remind me what alaska was again oh thank you for mentioning that Nico. <laughs> I forget the two uh, non-continental uh, uh also what's implied here by this because hawaii is also the same color as alaska uh <laughs> they're they're both labeled Rape Central. <laughs> God. Oh, what the? F- oh. <laughs> part of I mean, part of my French. Again, but why? Okay, so I did look this up. Okay. I looked it up, and Alaska does have an insanely high uh, sexual uh, assault uh. rate uh, rate per capita, right? Yeah. Um, Hawaii doesn't, but uh, <laughs> Alaska does. It has a lot of men. I think that men outnumber women like five to one. Wow. Um, Something like that because it's, yeah, it's pretty desolate except for a few cities, a lot of loggers and a lot of you know oil workers and stuff. But um, I don't know. I think there's better things that you could label Alaska. I don't know, bears, bear country, just yeah, a lot of bear bears. Country. Some, something a little friendlier instead of insulting a, a state of like you know two well, million y- people. You know what? I don't actually care about. I mean, it's very clearly offensive, but yeah. I, I don't actually care much about that. You know, no, offend people. Usually, no. I, I like offensive jokes. I, I think it's a great, you know, joy of humor is to offend people. Um, yeah. But what I think is most shocking about this is that one of the most powerful men, or who was one of the most powerful men, still is really in Canada, found that funny. <laughs> <laughs> You know, <laughs> there's not a good there's not a good joke on here. Yeah, uh, not like, one. It, it's all really lowbrow. Like ex- for example, Colorado, everyone is high. <laughs> okay, yeah, ex- yes, that's true. I, yeah, yeah, and it's like, <laughs> don't, don't you understand that Colorado has like less lenient marijuana laws than Canada? In part, to your government, actually, totally down to his government. It, it, it's really, it was really stupid, and the fact that he put that on Twitter. And didn't see how that was going to be a storm. Also shows that this guy is a whole let loss in a whole sorry uh, less intelligent yeah. than we thought he was. Yeah, you know, 
<laughs> what the hell? Here's another one I didn't really notice before. What the hell is it? Okay, so I think it's Kansas or Nebraska. I always get the two mixed up, the ones in the middle. But Kansas, I think, is called Brown Bakistan. D- yeah, why? What, what does that mean? What the hell does that mean? Brown yeah. Bakistan? Brown Bakistan. Does that mean they're tanned or something? Is it is it a native joke? I think it might be a Muslim joke. Is he making a is Muslim joke? a Muslim joke? joke? I, can't I hope not. I hope not, Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For your sake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That is a good point because you're right. Whenever you, you hear about someone a lot and they have a, a lot of power, you tend to assume that they're like generally bright. And he has glasses. <laughs> which yeah. make it, and yeah. he's so he's like elusive and mysterious you know he's like but you know he, what he lurks he, he, in the shadows but he might be actually just a big dumbass I, I think this is total nepotism if you look at the trudeau cabinet um justin trudeau's uh like wedding you know best men group uh, yeah. i think there's seven of them so not best men but like his wedding entourage let's sure. say uh four of them are now senior members of the liberal government so it's Jerry Butts, Mark Garneau, Justin Trudeau, obviously, and the short one, who I don't know his name to because he's sort of like, I don't really care that much. But so for me, it's not actually that Jerry Butts is a mastermind. I think Trudeau is just really keen on nepotism. He's Hence just why he's prime friend, minister. He's just best buddy. <laughs> yeah. <it's> like, <laughs> but you know so, what? I, I've got a Jerry Butts story. Um, oh, sure. Go, let's shoot. So Jerry Butts said something stupid again on Twitter and I wrote an article about it and then I sort of I was looking for his timeline again and this is in the same day and I wrote another article about him like two hours later so I did two hit pieces on him essentially in two hours sure and about two hours after that Jerry Butts tweets us at the post millennial and he says the post millennial spelt wrong and with a asterisk in it as it was a swear word has written a hit piece on me this was and there was like four spelling mistakes in that sentence alone he was so angry he's probably so pissed (laughs) just like the book (laughs) can't can't type right and then after that he said and you know why it's because the conservative party sent this email out to their supporters saying let's go after butts and then would you know Look at that. There's an article about me. It's like, yeah, it's not because we're coordinating this with the Conservative Party. It's because you said something really stupid and everyone's jumping on you for a chance to just attack you because no one likes you. You know? Yeah. You, you know what he did? He kicks the first First Nation woman out of cabinet. <laughs> and that's why oh, I yeah. don't like him. Yeah. yeah during SNC Lavalin, he kicked out uh, Jody Wilson Raybould. Yeah. Uh, which the Ethics Commission eventually did find was an abuse of power. They, told, they got dinged totally. for it. Like, it wasn't completely. even just an abuse of power. It was attempting to circumnavigate the rule of law. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my, I, I remembered today, I just, I totally forgot this until I wrote about the stupid uh, picture he tweeted, that he yeah. stepped down right in the middle of the SNC Lavalin scandal. Yeah. Which is something that really innocent people do all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and not only that, right? Not only did he kick out Jody Wilson Raybould, who everyone knows is a lovely woman, yeah. he also kicks out Jane Philpott. Who's and the best? Who's not only is she the best, she was a doctor. Yeah. She was the health minister. He was a doctor. This was before the pandemic. Right. He kicked her out. Thanks to Trudeau's 50-50 gender neutral cabinet, he yeah. had to get a woman. The next available woman was Patty Hajdu, who? who's a graphic designer. Who yeah. had to so they, they found someone with no experience in health whatsoever. To and, and as as a divine punishment against Justin Trudeau and Jerry Butts, a pandemic came around next. So his poor graphic designer, due to positive discrimination, <laughs> had to uh, had to administer over the greatest health crisis in Canada's history. Yeah, pretty rough, eh? And then, yeah. as we, as we all know, uh, Jane Philpott. Well, maybe we don't all know. She ended up just going back on the front lines during the pandemic because she's. Uh, uh, the honorable Jane Philpott. She's got a heart of gold and she's a doctor. As yeah. if, I don't know how you don't realize that she's a total asset to your team, oh. but uh, we really learned the hard way because Patty Hashdu sucks. And we're about to get sucks. into that, but I just want to say because we forgot to say, Gerald Butts, you are the idiot of the week. Idiot of the week. Boo, boo, boo. Yeah. So, there'll be a graphic there. Gets, thanks, James. Thanks, James. <laughs> All right, now moving on, not too far off from what we were talking about, we're going to talk about Patty Hashdu. What's Patty up to this week? 
Well, listen to this. Patty has you. <laughs> Thanks to our good friends at Black Locks. Thank you, Black Locks, for everything you do. Our good friends <laughs> at Black Locks reporters, who are some of the hardest working, they mind Ottawa's business. They have a hefty paywall. You can't really read them. It's something like, I don't know, $400 a month or something yeah. crazy. They, not but, but they came out with a, a great article today about Patty Hajdu and uh, the Canadian Health Administration, the official administration that oversees all kind of health spending. And uh, it's led by, it, it's the responsibility of Patty Hajdu, uh, who is, of course, the health minister that took over uh, Jane Philpott's position, as we just discussed. But uh, what we found out today was that the health administration <laughs> on March 12th, so uh, a day or two days after the World Health Organization declared a pandemic, a day after Justin Trudeau told people to stay indoors and to cancel hockey games and to cancel events and to cancel everything. Uh, the day after Teresa Tam, who I'm sure Patty Hajdu knows well, uh, advised, told people that this could get much worse. Still saying the threat to Canadians was low, but uh, it wasn't inconceivable that this could become a problem. Yeah. Uh, the, the health board decided to spend $300,000 on a deposit for a ski trip. For the health, for the, was for it the, taxpayer funded? It was taxpayer funded, right? Oh, so, <laughs> and what they have found is that uh, what they have found is that the the deposit is non refundable. <laughs> oh. So, so what we have here are uh, so it wasn't entirely entirely for a ski trip. It was for a convention, but there was a hotel that they had booked on a ski resort where I'm sure there would be some skiing. Uh, $300,000. Why, why is this being spent? Like, why is the taxpayer funding this? Um, I, I don't know, dude. I think... Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of why? Just, How do they get away with this? I don't understand. Face, man. I don't they're understand. stealing. <laughs> <laughs> it's theft. He, like, why isn't, he, why isn't there anyone stopping this? Yeah, $300,000 down the drain, non-refundable. I don't... This is the thing about for Black a ski Locks. trip. Yeah, yeah, for a ski trip. That uh, this is the thing about the uh, the article that it's tough to obtain some information from Black Locks. It didn't explicitly say that the event was canceled because they, yeah. it just said that they couldn't get the deposit back. So I don't know if the event's even been formally canceled. Well, they're gonna have to go now, they're, I guess. Yeah, well, they're gonna have to. They can't <laughs> get the deposit. I would actually be more pissed if they didn't go at this point. <laughs> yeah, honestly, <laughs> at this God. point, if you can't get the deposit back, at least just go for the trip. You know, yeah. just just it, it, do it in our face. You know, it, it just we, we all know now. It sh- the government waste. I look even with necessary. I, I understand why there has to be taxes. I hate taxes. It's coming out of my paycheck, and that yeah. is enough to make me just despise the government. However, I understand that I need to pay for stuff like healthcare. I I'm, I'm fine with it on the whole for roads, for street lamps. When I see Justin Trudeau give five grand to every single student in Canada. <laughs> and when I see him spending 300K on a ski trip, it makes me want to throw myself out the window. It's so irritating. Yeah. And he just spent like, it's, and you know why? It's because all of them, Bill Morneau, Justin Trudeau, Patty Hajdu, you know, all the rest, Mark Garneau, these guys were born, not just with a silver spoon in their mouths, a, like a silver shovel. They're like trust fund babies <laughs> to the highest degree. And, yeah. and, they, and they get away with it and they don't have any conception of what money is. And when they charge the taxpayer, they don't understand, oh wait, I'm taking $30,000 out of this guy's pocket because I can't get government spending under control. Like it's total theft. Yeah. The, 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 how did they get away with it? And we didn't prepare for this, but uh, this relates directly to this. Um, Justin Trudeau today at the press conference was asked about why Canada's AAA credit rating was now moved down to a double A credit rating. Yeah, that which is, is really significant, by the really way. Really significant. Because it means whenever we're taking money out, which we do a lot at the moment, or, mm-hmm. or when we need to, you know, get a loan, essentially, yeah. it means that it will be more expensive. So when, you know, in our current scenario, we have a trillion dollars, most likely, in debt, that is just going <laughs> to get yeah. more and more expensive due to our now double A tax or credit rating. And even still, it may downgrade to a single A credit rating. Incredible. So it's just shocking. It's and totally you, know, shocking. you know how he answered, of course, the same thing that he said time and time again. Uh, going into this pandemic, Canada had uh, one of the best balanced bu- budget books in the G7. It's just yeah. like, no, did we, did we really? No, I don't 
think we did. Nay. Uh, Nay. Pretty sure that's a lie, but all right. Well, and then, of course, he doesn't answer the question, avoids any kind of culpability, uh, refers to helping Canadians. Oh, I did it to help Canadians. Yeah, well, you're not because you're Nay. it's totally screwing us in the long run. Yeah, I have to say, I'm going to be in the UK next year. You're lucky. And, yeah, and so I, I'm not going to get taxed um, <laughs> next year when it will start to kick in, when you guys have to pay back your trillion dollar debt. And I'm so thankful. Oh my God. I would be, I want to, I feel so sorry for you, Bobby. Oh, and yeah. Viewers. This is going to be decades of debt. Like, this is not going away overnight. Centuries. It's, so, uh, yeah. yeah, it's going to be for the rest of our country <laughs> well let me tell you so so uh, uh, i wrote an article for amcon uh this week about the british empire and i was doing some research on it and i saw that in 1828 it was under the slavery abolition act britain bought every single slave in the empire and then released them but they had to buy it uh or buy the slaves rather off uh the slave traders so that's insane we only paid that back in 2015 that's a you know 1828 to 2015 is when that money was totally paid back. Wow. Imagine a trillion dollars of debt, you know? That is gonna be increased, just taking money out of Canadians' pockets. It's not like not even for one generation, it's a multi-generational thing. So we're condemning our sons and our grandsons because Justin Trudeau likes to go on a ski trip, apparently. <laughs> No, or wants Nico. to give students five grand. He wants, he wants to help Canadians. He wants yeah. to do what was best, the fastest way to make sure that all Canadians were taken care of. Oh, I don't care if I'm going to ruin my country for centuries afterwards. I don't care if uh, every if our credit rating goes from a triple A to a double <laughs> A, which who has a double A? I don't know, Portugal maybe? Uh, <laughs> like Ethiopia, some like countries that just no one like canada's a highly respected nation and we have a double a credit score that's not good Justin Trudeau <laughs> doesn't care he's just living it up for the moment because he's yeah. had the easiest life of all time he's never going to see the consequences of any of his actions he's going to go down to canadian history as a beloved figure that like brought us through a crisis and it pisses me off yeah it's terrible it's terrible <laughs> it's one of the worst things to think about and i'm laughing only because i can't punch <laughs> yeah, my camera right now yeah yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I don't know. anyway, that's not good. Well, I think the last topic of this podcast, and this is one I'm very, very excited about, and that's uh, an intern in an MP's office has basically had his career ruined because uh, because Peter McKay got him to spy on the RNA tool campaign. So this is wonderful, right? There's this guy in Calgary who was serving as like the regional director of the McKay campaign. He's called yeah. Jamie Lau. And, apparent, and I don't know the details of this, so this is just a sort of... Uh, I'm inferring here, right? Sure. They found an intern, promised them God knows what. Like, you, you can just sort of imagine what they promised him. Mm -hmm. And said, okay, I need you to log on to Zoom, download every single Zoom recording that Erin O'Toole has had. And this is what the Erin O'Toole campaign is alleging. I'm going to be very clear because I don't want to get sued by Peter McKay again. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, and got him to send it all, allegedly, to the McKay campaign. So it's the equivalent of like bugging the boardroom, you know, of, of like a Watergate. And I feel so sorry for this. The intern was 19 years old, right? I'm 19. Oh my God. I could see myself getting persuaded to do something like that for, you know, some price or whatever. It's like, almost you know. not even his fault, man. <laughs> yeah, like, I know. It's I know. definitely his first gig in like any kind of position that would involve any type of power. He totally just got thrown under the bus is basically what it <laughs> sounds like. He was young. He was uh, agreeable, probably just easy to persuade. He's 19 yeah, years old. Probably man. a bit dim. Dude, at 19 years old, he got convinced to smoke crack. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, if, it, if I would smoke crack, I would definitely, I mean, I'd definitely hand over some files, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, what's uh, going, what's going to happen with that? So uh, that sounds like some pretty big allegations. So I've spoken to a few people about this uh, in a few campaigns, actually, in two separate campaigns. I think it almost certainly happened. The fact that piece of, I mean, the fact that Aaron O'Toole uh, on a Friday night at eleven forty p.m. sent an email about this to every journalist, and the fact that the RCMP are probing, the National Division are involved. I think. And the National Division is like the most esteemed uh, investigators within the RCMP, right? So yeah. the people who deal with like political crises. Um, the OPP are involved. The Toronto Police are involved. 
uh, they're, they're, like, they're doing interviews. I think the interviews with Erin O'Toole has already happened or with their campaign. Um, and the McKay campaign went from calling it or just totally denying it to saying, actually, it's the Erin O'Toole's campaign fault for not sending or not being careful with the Zoom information. Whoa. And it's not... I, I think their line, and again, I... I like, so this isn't uh, gospel. Don't take my word as gospel here. Sure. But I, I think the McKay line is now... Look, uh, that's my roommate, by the way. He's a very nice bloke. Um, <laughs> the McKay campaign is now saying that, look, it's not our fault if you gave your Zoom login to everyone. But it's not just like logging onto a Zoom call. It's illegal. It's hacking. It's totally illegal. Right. And I think, from what I hear, criminal charges are certainly a possibility for uh, Jamie Lau and Ka like Calgary. It's a possibility. I don't know what's going to happen. And I think it might go... And again, this is just hearsay, but I think it might go pretty far up the McKay campaign um, because it was connected to addresses in Toronto. So they, they literally That's linked insane. their IP addresses. These idiots didn't use a VPN. So <laughs> they got the tech guys just like, oh, where, well, who are these people who are on all these Zoom calls and downloading all our Zoom calls? And they just found the IP address. It led them to Jamie Lau and it led them to address in Toronto, which I'm sort of, they're going to find out who it is momentarily. I bet that guy's totally concerned right now. <laughs> <laughs> Probably pissing his yeah. pants. <laughs> but it's, um, but at the end of the day, if it takes organize or if it takes staffers away from the McKay campaign, which I think it will, I think there's going to be resignations over this. And the McKay campaign can also be fined. So the McKay campaign has raised a million dollars. I think they can get fined a significant amount of money. If they get fined now, it means the last leg of their campaign is going to be totally underfunded. Um, oh. I don't know how it's playing out in the public, though. Like, what do you think? I've, at first, I think a lot of people thought it was petty, and now they're sort of beginning to realize it was actually pretty serious. Well, uh, I think right as of right now, stories like these sometimes take a little bit more time to really get the attention that they deserve. Um, Right now, it's yep. all uh, accusations, allegations, pretty serious ones. So I think serious. people people are paying attention. Um, I personally don't know too much, too too much about it. I kind of got get the gist of it, but I think if this does turn into a serious thing, which I think it's it could very well likely happen. Yeah, uh, I think everyone's gonna care. Everyone's gonna laugh at Peter McKay's face. Literally, it's like his, an Easter Island. No, head. literally, because yeah. his eyes are too close to his nose. But, <laughs> but can I just say, right? I, I, I hate to do this, but if you look at Peter McKay's nose, it yeah. goes in like three directions. I, I know the guy used to play rugby, and maybe he just broke it like a shit ton of times. That's probably right, dude. You seem, yeah. Honestly, can I just say, uh, Peter McKay, I think could probably beat the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I don't and know. Probably I, will. <laughs> he probably will. Next, if there's ever, if he's ever uh, the PM, and you're ever asking him a question, yeah. I don't. I think you will get a uh, swift. You <laughs> probably spin your jaw I, around. I sent him buddy. a text. <laughs> I, I have his phone number, yeah. uh, and, and I, I spoke to him, and this is before he ran. So I, I heard rumors that he was running, and I texted him, and he sort of vehemently denied organizing it, but not running. Mm -hmm. But like, I, so I, I've texted him a few times. Now I just text him, so <laughs> and, and he has. I, he must just have me blocked or something. Yeah. But I text him at like eleven fifty, and I saw it was red, and I was like, uh. <laughs> I was "Wait, like, you mean PM. you mean you har harass him?" <laughs> no, 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 no. no. It, I don't just text him about my life. I text him about stories for comments, you know. Oh, yeah. But but I, I just love the fact that this guy was in bed and he hears a ping on his phone. And and he pulls it over <laughs> and it's me just asking him about a serious campaign violation. <laughs> Yeah, he, he, he definitely knows who you are. He definitely is. Uh, you know how we get like one or two dislikes every episode? <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely him and Elizabeth May. <laughs> we watch every time to see what, how much uh, smack we talk about them. Yeah, he knows who you are and he hates you. And uh, yeah. uh, just to be clear, I besides the, what I say uh, about his face being weird, I think Which is he's, perfectly fair. It, po totally fair. I think that, even that's he, not damning of his character. He's I think even guy. he would tell you that, that that's true. Yeah. Uh, Cause you know, he seems like a, nah, anyway, <laughs> but, but like, uh, yeah. But why would he care? He has like a beautiful wife. He's, he's a nice, well. he seems like a nice enough guy. All right. Yeah. I'm trying not to get beat up right now. Cause if I ever see <laughs> you on the streets, Peter, and you uh, give me a look, which I won't be able to tell really. Cause your eyes are so squinty and you have a squidward nose. But uh, I'm I'm down to fight in a self defense situation. Let, that, let me be very clear. If you attack me, 
with a knife or your fist and you engage that, I would never do that with my Okay, <laughs> question for you. <laughs> Who would win in a street fight? Okay. Aaron O'Toole or Peter McKay? I think Peter McKay would win. I, Aaron O'Toole served in the military, dude. Yeah, but I don't know. Peter Mc, I don't know how tall Peter McKay is. I'm going to guess like 6'2". Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I'm going to guess Aaron O'Toole is probably 6, maybe 5'11". I don't know. He's, he's taller than me, I think. And I'm like 5'11". So okay, yeah, he so must be 6'4". He's probably 6 feet tall. I yeah. don't know. Peter McKay seems like he's from... Where is he from? Nova Scotia or some bo yeah. boring place? I thought New Brunswick. He's from like some small town that... that <laughs> you know. Like, I think Nova Scotia is very nice, by the way. They're, no, they're fine people, <laughs> but they're, they're very rough and tumble kind of guys. You know what yeah. I mean? These guys, they play rugby. They're like Scottish and stuff. And they, they are... They can get mean, you know? You don't want to yeah. be in a bar fight with those guys. So when it comes to street rules, I think Peter McKay's got it for sure. I think both of them, though, could totally mock Derek Slade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The <laughs> guy's <laughs> geek. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, who would win in a, th uh, a three-way fight? I think Derek Sloan loses that one 100 times out of 100. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Both of them would just, it would be, uh, they get jib rolled. It, it wouldn't last long. <laughs> Well, is that? I think that's kind of. I think we touched on. We didn't even plan that part, that fighting yeah, yeah. part. Nothing but, was, but the news. Fellas. Nothing but the news today. Uh, that was fun. Um, I think that's about it, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think so. How long? How, how long have we gone? Uh, uh yeah, yeah. I, I think we've had an eventful conversation. I think that was. I good. think. Uh, yeah, I think we've touched on most of the news. We didn't touch on some of the more serious topics, uh, which happened this week, uh, namely. Because it makes Roberta and I too angry. But I, I will say, for example, the letter uh, that sort of pl uh, Canada's political establishment sent to Justin Trudeau. It oh, makes yeah. me too angry. I can't talk about it. It's uh, not so, fun. Yeah, just really quickly. I think it was 19 high profile Canadians sending a letter to Justin Trudeau asking for a trade <laughs> for yeah. Meng Wanzhou, the CFO who broke uh, sanctions with Iran. For our two Michaels, my two favorite Michaels in the world, probably. Yeah. Uh, a trade between the two to uh, calm the fires of the uh, the Beijing, the of Xi Jinping's, of Xi Jinping's uh, kind mates. of the, uh, diplomatic war with with Canada. Yeah. Which is one it's, of the worst. It's, it's one of the most idiotic ideas I've ever heard. And for once, you know what? I'll say it. I agree. With Justin Trudeau. He did a good job. This one. I agree with him yeah. on this one. He's actually saying the right things. We can't just yes, circumvent Canada's rule of law, our judicial system, the thing that makes Canada good, one of the things, and yeah. uh, a cornerstone of democracy in a fair and just society that she got, well, she's going to get tried on. We can't trade her. For, yeah. for our two guys. And what, it's Trudeau insane. Was totally it's actually right. insane to think about it. Yeah. And Trudeau was totally right saying it, it's a blueprint for other regimes. Oh, 100%. If, if, we, you know, if we bow down to China here mm -hmm. to, in order to get our Michaels back, then every single Canadian citizen in every single hostile country will yeah. be used, like taken as prisoner and like to, to get some sort of policy achievement, you know? Yeah, 100%. It is so dangerous. Uh, if that happened and I was a Canadian in Saudi Arabia, for God knows what reason I would be in Saudi Arabia, or yeah. uh, Russia, uh, uh, even, I don't know, Australia, just because they're crazy sometimes, I would be yeah. afraid, you know? I, I, it's not a good, <laughs> good idea. And it would give them total leverage. Every time you want something out of Canada, just imprison two Michaels. They have to be named Michael. And yeah. you'll get whatever you want from and, them. And even taking away the practicalities of that, yeah. right, which I think is extremely legitimate, it's also about our principles. Yeah. Are we just willing to, to discard our rule of law, you know, to, to appease China so we get more money? Like that's, it, it, I, look, I think this word should be used extremely cautiously. Yeah. But I think it's almost evil <laughs> what they're doing. <laughs> like, like it's pretty much evil. Yeah. What, what it, China's it's doing. It's disgusting. And, and you know what? I would be very, very interested to see who these people's clients are and whether they're related, whether mm -hmm. they've been lobbied by the Chinese regime recently, yep. or you know what personal ties and relationships they have. Because it, it seems to me to be so strange. Yeah. You know, it, it, there's something really odd about it. Again, this is pure speculation. I don't know, but it yeah. seems to me that pure it's Pure speculation, pretty, pretty but you're allowed to speculate. As we all know, Francois Philippe Champagne, Champagne, when he couldn't name uh, Taiwan, everyone thought, hmm, that's kind of weird that you can't <laughs> say the word Taiwan. 
And yeah. it turns out he owed them $1.2 million. I heard somewhere he might have paid that off. I don't really care. It doesn't really matter if he might have paid <laughs> it off. You yeah. owed, You were in a position where you were, uh, where China had a lot of leverage over you, bucko. And uh, I, I, yeah, so I totally agree. I, uh, mm-hmm. I, I am not a fan of the Chinese regime at all. And we uh, uh, yeah, are I'm keeping calm. Meng, and we're going to get our Michaels back. Yeah. I'm calling it now. Meng's going to jail. <laughs> Michaels are coming home. Canada's number one. China sucks. China is asshole. <laughs> Thanks, and Bobby. With that, I think I can't stop that. Yeah. Um, no, that's our, that's our editorial line for the podcast. Well done. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you for watching this week in Canada. Episode it's been such four. pleasure. I promise episode five will be better. If you thought this one was bad, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, uh, we had some good moments. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. And uh, leave a comment, leave a like. Please leave a like. It means a lot to us. Leave a comment. Let us know if you like what you're seeing. If you have any recommendations, we read all of them and we think about them before we go to bed. Mm-hmm. Also, give us a subscription. Thumbs up the whole thing. Thanks for watching. Have a good week. See you next week. Bye-bye.